Greetings once again, heroes and villains out there. Dudes, this then back again with another chapter of My Hero Academia. And while this is the section where I usually give a summary of what I remember from last chapter, well, it's been a couple of weeks, time of recording, since the last chapter came out, and I guess they thought we forgot, so they put a summary for us. It says, Beating Shigaraki would mean winning the war. Unfortunately, pitting strength against strength is a losing prospect when facing the villain's overwhelming decay and regeneration. Hence the second's last ditch proposal to transfer one for all to Shigaraki and thereby strike at the existing scar in his inner spirit. Now Deku has summoned the resolve to part ways with the power he inherited. It's a pretty good summary, all things considered. But yeah, the last embers of Star and Stripe appeared within the soul of Shigaraki pointing at a fatal scar left behind on Tomura's soul that encases the inner child, Tenko, and it's something that even All Might can sense. So yeah, they're essentially going to use the transfer of each of the vestiges, the quirks within One For All, as essentially bullets, forcing the quirks in, causing massive damage as the transfer goes down. And, not to mention doing this, could destroy those quirks as well in the process. And Kudo has decided that he will be the first one up to try to break through the walls of Shigaraki's heart. And so Deku has encased his entire body in Black Whip to fortify and help him better move for what is to come. What'll happen next? Join me as I find out, won't you? We pick up with Deku looking the wildest he has ever looked. Black Whip just circulating throughout his whole body. He honestly looks more like a villain than a hero. I always think back to that comment during his solo adventures. Banjo is shocked saying he's using Black Whip to force his beaten busted up body to keep moving and then says he's instantly putting to use an idea he came up with in the heat of battle. What a way to utilize that quirk. Hey that's Deku for you. He's always thinking. Kudo says that's perfect. He's not driven by duty. Rather, his respect and admiration for quirks on the whole make one for all shine even brighter. Aw, that's mad props. <sighs> This is gonna be a bittersweet ending, isn't it? But it was always gonna be like that for this series. I'm honestly just excited to get back into things. This is My Hero Academia number 414. Overlay. Huh. Deku thinks to himself, I have to cope with Shigaraki's speed. Without the use of the second's gear shift, I'll be delivering the second to him full on. This gamble is all we've got left. To transfer one for all, the person you want to receive it has to take in some of your DNA. He remembers All Might's words. It doesn't matter what it is you eat as long as you get my DNA. That sounds so wrong. One for all can only transfer if its holder wills it to. It can be given to an unwilling recipient. Kudo then speaks out saying Bruce and I came up with that theory and put it into practice. Man, this brings back memory. Long past our own death, we're still beholden to our duty. Oh, so the transfer between Kudo to Bruce was a test initially. Interesting. Man, seeing Deku's gnarled up bloody fingers is so wild. As Kudo says, blood will serve as the transfer agent when it enters an open wound. But thanks to his regen, Shigaraki's wounds will, don't last for long. The only viable opening is the moment of impact. So we each strike, huh? Deku says I'm barely conscious after the recoil from gear shift, but I've got to land this next hit precisely. Meanwhile, Shigaraki, having regrown his severed arm, readies himself for the next attack. Shigaraki thinks to himself, during that last attack, something gave me the heebie-jeebie. So I sliced off my own arm just before he could. Oh, he sliced off his own arm. Okay, I didn't realize that was what was going on there. He locks eyes with Deku saying, and now he's got some scheme. Crippling agony all over, trouble breathing, in that state a normal person would be would focus on clinging to life. Yeah, a normal person, he says as he scratches at his neck. He then speaks out saying, sure, fine. As long as it takes, I'll keep destroying you, this country, everything. As both Deku and Shigaraki race in on each other, they both think this is where, while Deku thinks I transfer it, Shigaraki thinks 
I'll kill you. <laughs> Jesus. So as they rush at each other, Deku projects the thick smoke screen covering the area and thinks to himself, I'm the most useless right now. Huh? Why? But Shigaraki reaches out his hand saying, all I need is a dose of decay. You'll have to defend. Then no matter what you're plotting, you'll have to defend. But just as Shigaraki touches the ground, we see that Deku has used the enhanced version of Black Whip to literally lift that ground up out of the ground, essentially. Oh, that is so wild. Much to Shigaraki's surprise, as he thinks, Ripping up the earth to keep decay from spreading? But when did he grab such a massive chunk? But Bonjo knows as he thinks, right when the kid uh, was sent flying, he shot strands of black chains under the ground and carved up the earth itself, all to prep for the next round. That's Deku, always thinking multiple steps ahead. While Shigaraki thinks, like UA's anti-decay strat, huh? Yeah, the... Little sections that would launch up every time that Shigaraki was going to cause decay to keep it from spreading. I love how everything just comes back. Suddenly, Shigaraki's danger sense goes off, and he looks up through the smoke screen, noticing something approaching. He reaches his hand out, but it's only the cape, having been projected forward by Black Whip. And thinks to himself, the decoy tactic from the sniper battle. Yep, the fight against Lady Nagant. Everything, everything is just coming together. But as Shigaraki decays away Deku's cape, he thinks, Huh? But the light shown by my search quirk is pointing to this thing. He looks at the tendril and thinks, Blood? Search zeroed in on his blood? Hold on, this light isn't Midori at all. Where is he? Ah, uh, sure, I get it now. And Shigaraki reaches out just as Deku is already incoming, already too close. It's too late. As Deku thinks, search indicates the location of those the user has seen. We gambled, remembering Shigaraki's words. You think I don't see you, Phantom? On the possibility that search would register the other successors. Jesus. So even using that as a strategy the fact that he could see the vestiges of the other users of one for all shoot man there's like some 60 chess going on here deku remembers kudo's words oh no deku thinks my intention to transfer the second allowed him to split off and reside in my blood jesus by launching that blood straight at shigaraki i fell off his radar and created an opening to get up in his face i exploited the fact that he can track me that plus a handy smoke screen made him misjudge my position for this sneak attack. Yeah, overwhelm the senses. Best way to get around the spidey sense. Deku thinks back to when he was studying the quirks with Bakugo, where he said to Bakugo, huh? No, I'm sure they had awesome quirks. Rather, his respect and admiration for quirks on the whole. And as N calls out for Deku, Shigaraki suddenly starts to sprout that hand armor across his body, and it begins to envelop him as he thinks, my body rejects what's coming. But Deku, he's going in, roaring, fish shining, saying, it can't afford to take, oh, Shigaraki thinks, it can't afford to take this hit. But Deku manages to dodge out of Shigaraki's reach, dipping under and getting him right in the solar plexus. You see that Shigaraki just merely managed to graze Deku's forehead. A lot of blood comes out, but that's because a lot of blood always pours out of this artery up here whenever it's struck. Wrestlers do that. They'll use some piece of sharpness to kind of cut above their eyebrow to make any injury they receive look a lot more violent than it actually is. I always throw that tidbit out there because it's always one of those things that always kind of took me off guard. I'm like, oh, I never knew that. But as the transfer is underway, Kudo delivers some last words to Deku as he's transferred saying, don't let it weigh on you. I was only ever a phantom anyway. My mind and will have passed to him. But before he can make me his own, I'll. And Kudo, he rams right into that mass of darkness in Shigaraki's heart. And Shigaraki, he feels it. But in that moment, Deku sees Shigaraki's memories. The memories of when Shigaraki first met Dobby and Toga. Dobby saying in person, you're super gross, dude. While Toga said, oh, this handsy guy is friends with Mr. Stainy, right? I want to join too, your League of Villains. Deku sees this and finds himself questioning it, going, huh? But then he continues to look around as the surroundings begin to swirl. Someone saying, 
but and it's during the sports festival where Deku faced off against Shoto where Shoto saying I want to be a hero too but then he looks around and sees Spinner saying I'm only here because Stain inspired me to take action Deku thinks to himself the sports festival round two against Todoroki what the hell and Spinner? Yuichi then speaks up saying, Your memories are blending together, I suppose. But N calls out, Ninth, don't let up. Deku thinks, huh? Sixth? N tells him, It's working. The second pulled it off, but it wasn't enough. So keep it coming. And as Shigaraki's reeling, Deku pulls back for another punch. Yeah, baby. I gotta admit, this chapter had me in a special amount of hype. Just because of, I love the fact that you have Deku using moves he's made previously that work. Tactics, thought processes, patterns. The whole idea of how much Deku respects these quirks. He studies these quirks. He's mix matching them and using them in ways that nobody would ever even think of. But in the end, it's not just him. It's all of them. All of them working together. All of them sacrificing themselves. The irony of it all is the way Shinomori went out is very similar to the way he went out in terms of his actual life. Too soon. Suddenly he's just gone. You know? In life he was training. He never actually died at the hands of All for One. He just died one day. And that was the proof of, you know, you can't have a quirk and not suffer and die off after receiving one for all but then he was just snatched up suddenly and he was the first to go it's actually kind of sad in terms of how his life played out pre and post-mortem but kudo being the first ember to go in to just do the job to do the first self-sacrifice makes a lot of sense and i feel that next it'll be bruce then probably n then maybe bonjo then i think maybe yuichi and if anything it'll probably be nana last that would make a lot of sense. Did I say Bonjo? I feel like Bonjo will happen before Yuichi. But a lot of this makes sense just because of the nature of what we've been talking about up until this point. The connecting of the souls and personalities and the connection of the two quirks, all for one and one for all. There's an interesting symbiosis going on here. Not to mention, I like the self-sacrifice. You know, no matter what, going forward, Deku, he doesn't come out of this without losing a lot potentially everything that he's gained over time. I don't know. Shoot, I, I really like this chapter. It didn't blow me away. To a certain extent, I just loved the references. It's, it's a chapter that just made me really recall all the best hits, both figuratively and literally, of My Hero Academia. And I really enjoyed it. But let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. How do you feel about Deku utilizing new tactics and old tactics and managing to get that one strike in? How much do you think Deku will lose before he's finally able to get through to Shigaraki? And even then, will it be enough? How do you feel about the fact that they're experiencing each other's memories on top of that? Potentially connecting in a way that nobody has ever actually managed to connect with Shigaraki. Will that make the difference? I want to hear from you. So like, comment, subscribe if you enjoyed the ride. Thank Thank you so much for watching and until next time i've been news this then and i hope to see you later till then bye bye <laughs>